Hi everyone. So yesterday I challenged the members at HVN to film themselves interpreting one of the lessons of Siebenhauer's second department. Uh, a lot of people responded and there were quite a few nice videos put up and what I really liked about them is that um, they differed in a certain number of key details that in, in, mostly in the points where, <coughs> excuse me, where I thought they differed. And just to wrap it up, I wanted to give my own vision of how the lesson could be done, but I also wanted to give a little bit of an extra uh, explanation. So uh, what are the different options in this lesson? How could they be interpreted? And then my own version. So um, just, you've seen the lesson. I'll just repeat it once more and give a, a translation for the non-Dutch speakers. Schijnslag onder de arm en naar het hoofd. Slag naar de buik met uitval. Opstaan. Pareer de schijnslag naar het hoofd en de slag naar de rechter dij. Slag naar het hoofd met uitval. Opstaan. Pareer de schijnslag naar de linkerwang en de rechterwangslag. So in English, um, what that says is a feint under the arm and to the head. Followed by a strike to the belly with a lunge. After that, you stand up and parry the feint to the head and the strike to the right thigh. After that, you strike to the head with a lunge and you stand up and parry the feint to the left cheek and the right cheek. Uh, the last one is not a feint but an actual strike. So, how could you see that? How could that series of movements be interpreted. Now, first of all, the starting position. This is a lesson from the second department of Siebenhaar. There are three, and they correspond to the three guards. Number one, hand on the inside. Number two, hand on the outside. Number three, hand on the outside and high. So therefore, second department means that all of the lessons start and end in second guard, like so. Now, uh, Let's go over the different movements. It says it starts with a feint under the arm. Now there are various ways that you can interpret that. Um, the two main ones that I feel is one, uh, as I'm standing in second guard, my opponent is also standing in second guard. So therefore, this underside of the arm is somewhat vulnerable. If I were to strike underneath towards it like so, he would be forced to lower it or drop his point. And both of these movements would open up the head, which I can use to think towards the head. That's option number one. Option number two is that you think a strike on the inside of the arm, like so, but you drop it underneath in sort of a disengaged Durchwechsel type movement. And the advantage of this is that you can very smoothly go underneath and immediately go for the feint under the arm, uh, under, uh, over the head. So the advantage of the one, I think, is this is quite threatening, so it forces the opponent to, like I said, either drop the hand or drop the point or both, very much opening the head. The second one, this one, gets you a very smooth follow-up to the head. I saw both being done in the videos, and that's very good. Um, both have their merits, uh, and uh, both are perfectly valid interpretations of that movement. Now, moving on. We are fainting under the arm, fainting towards the head, and then we are attacking the stomach with a lunge. Now, the stomach is the inside line, and it's usually attacked with a horizontal strike. So right now, my hand is moving towards my left side, and I'm standing up, and the text says that I'm parrying a strike towards the head. It's a feint, but I still have to parry it, because you can never know. So you always have to feint just to be sure. So I stand up, and what Stephen Hart advises, if you've struck towards the stomach, is to raise the hand on the left side, and the point towards the right, to go on sort of a hanging guard like this. 
Now this is one version that I've seen in the videos. So you strike towards the stomach and then you raise the hand up again to parry the head. But it is also feasible and perfectly effective to attack the stomach, retreat back into second guard and then see the feint coming towards the head, in which case you parry like this. In simple high third. So option number one, you attack the stomach, you retreat, you see the feint coming and you raise it up like this with the hand on the left side and the point towards the right. Or you attack the stomach, retreat in the second, see the feint coming towards the head and go up into high third. Both are quite feasible options. So, after that, you parry the right thigh. Now, Siebenhaar, when saying right thigh or left thigh, he doesn't literally mean my right leg or my left leg. He means the right outside of my thigh or the left inside of my thigh. So, if this, if my right thigh is being attacked, I need to parry this. Now, whether or not I parried like so, or like so, also makes a slight difference in parrying the outside of the thigh. If I parry like this, the movement of parrying an attack to the thigh is a lot more powerful and smooth, like so. It actually strikes into the incoming strike of the opponent than if I were like over here and I had to drop my point. I would have to make a bigger movement to get that same power into the parry. So, uh, that's an advantage and a disadvantage of the different uh, movements. They all work, but some of them flow into the, uh, uh, the other a little more easily. Now, from parrying the thigh, we are now wound up like a coiled spring, and we can very easily explode forward into an immediate attack to the head with a lunge. And after this, we want to immediately retreat back again, parry the feint towards our left cheek, and the attack towards the right cheek, which immediately brings us into second guard again, finishing up the whole movement. Now, as a whole, the way I would do it is feint under the arm, Think towards the head, attack the stomach with a lunge, retreat and parry the feint to the head, and parry the strike towards the thigh, then immediately strike forward with a lunge towards the head, and retreat, parry left, parry right. Another version that you could do is feint under the arm, feint towards the head, attack the stomach, parry the head and the thigh, Attack the head, retreat, parry left and right. These are just a few different versions and interpretations. I saw all of these in the uh, different videos. Now, um, some people didn't tick all of the boxes of the text, and that's perfectly fine. I did see a lot of people who have never done a Sabre class before do this lesson, and I'm very impressed by that. It can be very intimidating to just pick up a weapon and try to interpret the text, but that's what HEMA is, so kudos to you guys. Um, this is my interpretation, and I hope you enjoyed following along with the lesson, and we hope to do a couple more of these in the future. So, thank you, and see you next time.